topic of becoming a zero waste household may for some of us feel just a tad bit intimidating as we look at our trash and waste. But you know the good news? Vicki and Deb are going to inspire us by the choices they have made and the changes that they have made for the good of creation. And they're going to help all of us know the steps, itty bitty or larger, that we can take to more and more live into our charge to be stewards of creation and to live into our baptismal covenant promise of not just appreciating the wondrous works of creation, but protecting, joining God in caring for creation. So I'm going to hand it over to Vicki and Deb now, who are going to share their screen, right? So. At C. Okay. So there we'll, we go. Okay. All right. So, Ready to go. Hi, everyone. I want to begin by, so Jane alluded to the possible feeling of intimidation. And I was going to close with this, but let me instead start with, uh, one of the zero waste websites I visited was we don't need a handful of people doing the zero waste thing perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. So that's <laughs> kind of the point. What you can, where you're able. So what you're looking at on the screen right now is a picture of the mouth of the Los Angeles River, just a couple miles from our St. Luke's home, our church uh, building. And through this waterway, and other local Southern California waterways and beaches every day, approximately 10 metric tons or in excess of 22,000 pounds of plastic fragments are carried into the Pacific Ocean. Much of it destined for the great Pacific garbage patch. So let's go ahead and move to the video, Nancy. At sea, thousands of miles from any land, the vastness of the ocean is giving way to what some say is the largest garbage dump in the world. Bottle caps, soap bottles, shards of plastic. It's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's mostly plastic, which doesn't biodegrade. It just crumbles down into smaller and smaller pieces. Patch now spreads across millions of square miles in the Pacific Ocean. How far does it extend? It can't be too large. As a matter of fact, it extends from just off the coast of uh, California all the way to China. It's bigger than the continental United States. Charles Moore made the shocking discovery in 1997 by accident while sailing the Pacific. He's been collecting samples of the growing garbage patch ever since. Some samples contain six times more plastic than plankton. It's been described almost like a trash soup. It's like a minestrone that's out there, and all the little vegetables are different colored bits of plastic. The garbage patch is caused by a series of currents in the Pacific Ocean, pooling what we all throw away. The currents create a circular effect, pulling debris from North America, Asia, and the Hawaiian Islands, and shooting it all into a graveyard of trash, 3.5 million tons of it. 80% is plastic, and it doesn't decompose. It stays as little plastic pieces for decades. So this is our final uh, sample. Moore stages regular trips back to the garbage patch for research. During his latest mission, he noticed an alarming new trend. This is the highest plastic to plankton ratio we've seen, obviously. From this five years ago, now from a sample taken just this year, uh, the quantities have gone up very dramatically. More than doubling in five years. Moore says there's no reason to suggest it will ever slow down. And here's something new. Evidence that shows small fish are eating the plastic. So is it entering our food chain? A fish like this, I've found 26 pieces of plastic, all different colors inside one stomach. Birds, too, are making a meal of it. Large quantities are found in their stomachs. 
but the biggest debate, how to clean up the garbage patch. The experts tell us that there's no single silver bullet. We're going to keep looking, but at the moment, it's not clear what the best course of action would be to, to deal with the materials that are already there. Even more agrees it's virtually impossible to clean up the patch, so stopping it from growing even bigger appears to be the best approach. Beach oh. cleanups like this one from the Ocean Conservancy can help by preventing other ocean dumps from forming. Improving recycling, another solution. Less than 5% of all plastic is recycled globally. Many agree changing our behavior is the only hope. The planet is a closed system, so everything that happens on Earth stays on Earth. What we need to do is we need to accept responsibility at a local level and reduce the amount of plastic that's finding its way down our waterways into the oceans. It was heartbreaking and disgusting at the same time to see this, uh, all, all of this garbage, and even to open up seabirds and to see big caps. They think it's food. They think it's uh, a shrimp or something that they're going for, and they swallow it. There's no proof they're saying that it would kill the birds, but there's no nutritional value in this. And if they think it's full and they're not eating for something else, it's kind of cause and effect, Diane. Angering and six times the plastic that there is plankton. You sent me here, thank you for the gift, but you sent me a sample of the debris. And if everybody could see the horror of the plastic in this, I mean, if we don't change, where does this end? Look at this straws, plastic straws, little pieces of plastic. It's just awful. Well, tomorrow, Sam is going to go underwater again and show us the reality of what's happening on the coral reefs. And again, it's one thing to think that we're in the middle of something happening to the planet. you got to see it tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. So what happens here? I, I think it's important before we continue to note that uh, I'm sure all of you are aware that Diane Sawyer has not been on Good Morning America for many years. In fact, this clip was from 2008. Uh, you, I can assure you that it has not improved and most likely has gotten worse in the past 12 years. So let's go ahead on to the next slide. And this is kind of what got me into thinking, what, what can I do? I mean, obviously, um, there are some important things to think about. And I thought about, uh, I found out that half of the 300 million tons of plastic that are produced are for single use. Think your yogurt container, the lid to that coffee to go, the lid to that drink to go, the small little non-dairy creamer cups for our, our coffee, your candy bar wrapper, believe it or not, has plastic in it. Your chip bag has plastic in it. Uh, energy bar wrappers, straws, all of these things. And 90% of the trash floating on the ocean is plastic. And they alluded here, I, this fact says that 9% has been recycled. And really, recycling of plastic is a myth. The truth is that this kind of was sold to us by the companies that wanted to keep making it so that we would feel good about continuing to buy things in plastic. In the past 40 years, it is estimated that less than 10% of plastic has actually been recycled. And up until 2018, just two years ago, what we would do is we'd really collect it and ship it to China, out of sight, out of mind. And then China said, uh, we're done being your dumping ground. And so since 2017, 35,000 tons have been produced and 26,000 plus of that has ended up in the landfill, never to decompose. It will continue on this earth well past our lifetimes. And that kind of woke me up. It takes 450 to 1,000 years for a piece of plastic to degrade, not decompose, but to break into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces like they showed in the film. So every piece of plastic that I have ever bought in my lifetime, any of us have ever bought in our lifetime, is going to be here for generations after we leave this earth. And that's kind of a really powerful thing to think about. It was something that really woke me up. So I said, well, that means it's got to stop. I have to stop to the best of my ability purchasing plastic. And then I found out, well, the landfill. 
We don't have our, uh, I asked, we we're going to bring up a head of lettuce. Vicki and I went to a, a video screening before COVID called Wasted on the food waste. And we learned in that, in that movie that a head of lettuce takes 25 years to decompose in a landfill because there is no oxygen, there's no anaerobic process for that to break down. A head of lettuce, you go plant that out in your backyard, it's going to be gone in a couple weeks. But in the landfill, 25 years. So again, then we have to stop, to the best of our ability, getting anything that cannot be uh, composted or um, uh, reused for as long as we can reuse it. So now it's time, now that we have that all out of the way, for our little show and tell. So if you can go ahead and take the slide off, Nancy, we're going to show you some of the things that we have. How do we get rid of plastic in our house? Okay, so you see here a, a couple of things, and we're going to actually show this to you live. So if you can put the, I guess, the spotlight on me so that I can actually show you these things. We have tons more than that. Okay, so we have paper, uh, excuse me, toilet paper, all right? It comes in a plastic package. Not in this house. We go to Smart and Final. We buy a big, big box. box of palm toilet paper that is wrapped in paper that can be put into the compost pile, okay? Zero plastic toilet paper. Uh, this is, I know, Deacon Steve's most fascinating one, and that is, did you know that toothpaste tubes are made of plastic? So what did we do? We started subscribing to Bite Toothpaste Bits. They were on Shark Tank a few months ago. They ship your initial little bottle, or you can buy a subscription for the larger bottle. And this ships to us every four months, I think. They send it in a, the first jar comes in a jar. After that, they send it in a biodegradable pouch, shipped in a paper box, as small as they can make it, with paper lining. Zero plastic. You take this little bite, and it's just a little pill. And you pop it in your mouth, you crunch it up, it actually foams up and everything else. And for those of you who may be wondering, oh, but does it really clean your teeth? I've been using this for over a year and a half. My past three dental checkups, A-OK, -okay. it works. <laughs> the, the, the partner to that is a bamboo toothbrush, right? You can actually find these at Target now. I got my last one at Walgreens. It's made of bamboo, a totally renewable resource. No plastic in that, right? And uh, I believe, oh, I can't remember what the bristles are made of, but they're not plastic. So I think that's important to remember as well. So what about shampoo? Oh my goodness, you get a bar of shampoo. Now, Vicki here doesn't like bar shampoo. So then what you do is you go to bring your own Long Beach. The fellow that you saw, the, the sailor you saw in the video, uh, Charlie Moore is from here in Long Beach. He left from Long Beach, came back to Long Beach. He founded Agalita Research Foundation. They're the ones that keep going out and studying that Great Pacific garbage patch. They have a shop downtown Long Beach on first and also one at the marina uh, where the Agalita office is. You take your own bottle. Oh, this has got well, food. Take your own jar. Take your own old plastic shampoo jar that's going to last for 450 years. You refill it out of their pumps, and you, you, they weigh it, you're good to go. Zero plastic there. Uh, dish soap, same thing. You can go to Agolita. I like to use bar soap. We actually wash our dishes by hand because the dishwasher's on the fritz. But you can, uh, there's going to be resources posted in the chat for Drops. It is a company that makes uh, biodegradable pouches that you can use for dish detergent. Again, shipped without plastic. What about lotion? Go visit Algalita or bring your own. Or we found this at a farmer's market, Shea buttercream. Very wonderful, nice and thick, works well. No plastic. Soap, right? Lots of soap. Again, a farmer's market soap. This one has no packaging whatsoever. Winco, no packaging. And another company that you'll find in the resources is Herbaria. Now, I don't know if this is a biodegradable bag, but I can assure you we will use, reuse this bag until it's dead. And we'll show you some of that. Um, but again, Herbaria does not ship 
in these bags. Their soap is wrapped in paper. We got this because we're, we're buy from there regularly. So they're having a sale right now, six of their little sampler bars. They normally sell these at trade shows and fairs. COVID, no trade shows, no fairs, go online. Uh, it's buy one, get one free. One of these packages for I think $16.95 and you actually get two for $16.95 right now okay. until October, 20, uh, October 15th. That is not a paid advertisement. Um, a couple of other things. What about my plastic wrap? Beeswax wraps. So it's, it's cloth that's coated in beeswax. You can regenerate it by going to BYO, buying some wax chips. You melt them with the iron. So what you do is you warm it up in your hands and, and it really seals it because it's wax. You warm it up in your hands. You can see how well it's sealed. And you just wrap your food in it, our onion from last night, and it stays fresh and uh, fresh and zero plastic. So then my lunch pail, stainless steel, right? No more plastic lunch pail. Zebra. Zebra. Buy bulk foods. No plastic bag. Go to the bulk food bins. COVID, you can only use the ones that are gravity feed. They got rid of the scooping kind, but you can still do it. Take your reusable bag. Take a paper, paper bag. bag. This is a mason jar, but we threw out all of our plastic Tupperware. Actually, we recycled it, right? This is a applesauce jar that is today holding beets. So when we obviously zero waste, you're gonna to have to buy things in glass, but we use and reuse glass as much as possible. We don't do it perfectly. We love the tamales at Costco during the holiday season. Yes, we bought four bags of these, but you can tell this bag has been around since last December for the holiday season. Almost a year, we've been reusing it. It might hold a loaf of bread, it might hold crackers, who knows? But we know it's gonna be here for 450 years. And what can you do with your first yeah. bottles? You can put your seeds in them when you're done. <laughs> California poppies. <laughs> so I think it's really important um, to, one of the things that they've added to the reduce, reuse, recycle is really reduce, reuse, uh, recycle, refuse, and rethink. We really need, when we go to the grocery store, to think. We don't buy berries anymore at the grocery store. They come in clamshells, mm. right? So we do it that. We do buy as big a bag as we can frozen at Costco. We'll use the plastic bag as much as we can. So are we completely zero waste? No. Are we completely zero plastic? No. But in every way that we can, we have removed that and we reuse and reuse and reuse. So also we know with COVID, the whole reusable bag thing, if, if you haven't been advised of that, you can take them, but the checker's not gonna bag your groceries for you. You get your produce in the produce. Don't get the plastic bag for the produce. Take your own reusable, or I just read a tip, take a cardboard box, put it in the box, take it out of the box onto the belt, put it back in the box, off to your car you go. So there's, there's an adaptations we can and I believe we, we do need to make. And I read an interesting thing recently also that um, we are the only species that is destroying its habitat. Think about that for a second. No other species on earth is destroying its own habitat. And we're, we're destroying our habitat and all these other creatures' habitats while we're at it. So I think it's definitely, it's something that we've become kind of passionate about and uh, really go with that. So remember, changing just a few simple habits can greatly impact the whole world and your world as well. So time for some questions, I think. And, yeah. and feel free to download yeah. the two documents, the PDFs on the chat. There's uh, documents with the resources and some of the presentation um, and a checklist for you to download so you can look at how you are doing. Yes. And, and just Google zero waste and you'll come up with all kinds of other resources. Anne. Um, can you talk a little bit about textiles in the landfill? How much oh. of the landfill is filled with discarded clothing? 
Well, yes, I can tell you, we, that was briefly mentioned in the wasted thing. They also, of course, do not decompose. And so we don't buy, thank you for bringing that up, we don't buy new clothes. We go to, you know, shop thrift stores. You'd be amazed. In fact, I think this, this blouse, these are, these are from thrift store. It's this blouse <laughs> still had a tag on it. It was brand new, $2 at the thrift store. We can, Vets. We, we like to go to Amvet, get a whole new wardrobe for 20 bucks. It's great. <laughs> I've got a question. Cecilia. Thank you. Uh, can you uh, write down in the chat, uh, two things. Can you write down in the chat your source for soap? Okay. And then also on the berries front, um, please go to the farmer's market, support the Harbor area farmer's markets because they're using um, cardboard things very often for the berries and they've got berries right now and they're delicious. They also will take back the plastic little tubs The not, I mean, the, the sort of, um, the wire one. Uh, yeah, the plastic okay. wire things. Um, and and also the place you mentioned in downtown Long Beach, oh. uh, the reused, they are often at the Sunday farmer's market in the marina. Oh, I did not know that. They used to be before COVID. I'm not sure they still are, but I think so. And you can also buy, they have glass containers you can buy to fill up if you want. And then they also have like metal containers you can buy to fill up. So, but thank you guys for this. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And thank you for bringing that up, Cecilia. We did have on our notes, yes, the farmer's market. Farmer's market, for sure. Everything that you can. If you go to Long Beach Fresh, they have a listing of all the updated farmer's markets, even during COVID. Long Beach Fresh. So, other questions for Deb and Vicki? You can type them into chat, raise your hands up. Oh, can I say one more thing? Please. Go for it, Cecilia. Sorry. The Cal Heights newsletter says that Long Beach, the city of Long Beach, because of what you said about China no longer taking our recyclables, is going to be completely switching, no longer taking milk cartons, no longer taking cereal boxes, and no longer taking plastics except for one and two. Yeah. Um, and that's because they realize there's, that they're not going to be recycled. Right. So even, this is even more necessary. Thank you. It, it, it really is. It, plastic recycling is a complete myth. It's a myth. And, yeah. and also, for a while, the cities were saying, okay, put whatever you need into that bin. But I, I learned that's another thing that led to the zero waste that if stuff gets in there that is not uh, traditionally recycled or whatever, it contaminates the entire stream, they incinerate it. So it's really, it's a sad, sad state. They so for years we've been thinking we were doing good and sadly, no. And so you, you all answered the yogurt question that you buy it in glass. Do you yes. buy each time in glass or do you have a well, place to refill? Oh, no, it has to each time in glass. We actually, so that's kind of the rethink your shopping. We actually found uh, yogurt in, in a glass jar at Sprouts, I believe it was. That's what I put. So that's that kind of place like that are the place to check. And yeah, it's in a glass jar. It does have to be. There's also another yogurt that sometimes comes in a little ceramic container with a foil pull off, except yeah. that they end up with all these ceramic containers that don't have a lid. So we stopped doing that. Right. And, but also, that also reminds me that um, Creamer, you, at Sprouts, we were there a few weeks ago, milk is coming back in glass jars. So th if we each start doing it, we will be forced to go back to what we did. And, and in my opinion, we have to to save our planet. Just so through. question, does glass recycle or is glass for reuse? Glass, if you can get a place to take it, glass is one thing that is completely recyclable. You melt it down, you bring it back. But glass for sure shouldn't go in the landfill. So, and again, there's kind of the problems getting places that will actually recycle. And that's why, you know, 
obviously. We have a bazillion glass jars uh, in our cupboards, but uh, glass is completely recyclable. It's one of the few things. Glass and uh, clean aluminum are the only things that they come as glass, they get recycled as glass. Aluminum comes as aluminum, gets recycled as aluminum, which is another point of the plastic recycling. A plastic water bottle that is recycled cannot come back as a plastic water bottle. Yeah. It comes back as playground pellets or whatever. Yeah. So, but the city doesn't recycle glass, does not. Yeah, so I don't know where we would, we're, we're looking into that. We just found out about that. Okay. Okay. Used to have their recycling system set up, but um, I haven't been in touch with that for a long time. But if you go to Long Beach Waste Management, um, they have all the answers for the specifics on recyclables. Uh -huh. Three workshops on Zoom. So I would recommend going to Long Beach Waste Management and, okay. and get um go to the uh, get on the Eco Guide Long Beach Eco Guide newsletter has a great a great assortment of information. Okay. So Mezzi, do you want to say something about Strauss Dairy and what they yeah. what jars they'll take back and reuse? Um, are you able to hear me? I'm not sure. Yes. With my... Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I get it from Sprouts, but I'm pretty sure they're at other stores too. Sprouts has all their dairy in glass. And so I think it's $2 a bottle on the deposit because they really want them back. It's a, it's a bit to invest, but then you just bring it back there and you get your deposit back or you just use it towards the next bottle of milk and you're set. And Sprouts will manage that or do you have to get actually to Strauss Dairy for that? Nope, you just bring it when you check out. Awesome. And they'll, they'll give you back your yeah. credit. So other questions on our screens, questions in the chat? I, I think Ann Burdett, I noticed a comment there where she said yogurt is pretty easy to make. And I think that's another, another thing to go back to. You know, 100 years ago, we made all our food. You know, we, we, we didn't have grocery stores. You had the icebox. I mean, my parents talked to me about when they were kids, they had the icebox. You had to go to the store every day or the milk was on the front porch every day. And so like for spaghetti sauce, you know, and, and we have busy lives, it's a different world, but it, as wherever we can, we need to start turning back to our roots, I think, so to speak. I have a question. Mary, uh, yes, go. To do that. So I was reading something a while back about how like some things that we don't think are plastic have like sneaky plastic, right? So like specifically it was talking about like your jeans or like a lot of jeans have plastic because they're <clears throat> like stretchy. And now I'm like stressed because I'm like, where's all the sneaky plastic, <laughs> you know? So um, do you have any tips on like what stuff to be careful with that might not be like explicitly plastic, but we can be careful about that has You get uh, mm -hmm. you know all the materials that would definitely be completely plastic free, guaranteed are cotton, linen, and silk. So um, there actually, I Googled yesterday, uh, sneaky places that there's plastic and websites will come up and they give kind of like the top 10 that have sneaky plastic. That's where I got the thing about, you know, that, that chip bag, believe it or not, and your to-go coffee cup. And it's a shame with COVID that we can't take our own reusable cups anymore. But that coffee cup, which we would all think should be compostable or recyclable, is not because it is lined with plastic to make it waterproof. So it, it is everywhere. You have to rethink. I haven't gotten a to-go cup of coffee in a while. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh-huh. Are th I see a question, are thrift stores taking donations? Yeah. Yes, to the best, to the best of my knowledge, yes, they are. But the Salvation Army is not doing pickups yet because um, I checked it out because we've got, we need one. <laughs> yeah, well you can take it to the store. My plastic free life, I like that. So, um, other, we've got probably another minute or two. So either any last questions or any last 
um, inspirational statements by Vicki and Deb? You know, I think I'd just like to repeat what I said at the beginning and how I was going to close today. This is from a Zero Waste a Life uh, blog. We don't need a handful of people doing it perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. Change, we started with one thing. I start, I, we started with the toothpaste bits and now you can see where we've gone from there. So pick one thing uh, that it's going to be. Maybe it's that you don't get a straw anymore. You know, I guess that was one of the first ones. You get to the, and I think because of California, uh, they don't give you the straw anymore unless you ask for it. But uh, we always order two glasses of water, no straw. So. Well, um, uh, this was amazing. Thank you so much uh, for communication. I guess the three things I'd note are um, information of just both how bad things are and how much we actually can do. Uh, communication of your absolute passion and enthusiasm. It is hard to listen to you all and not get excited about what we can do. And for your generosity in saying, it's about a million of us doing it badly. Absolutely. And that possibility for each one of us to do one thing and have one lead to the next, lead to the next. And so, Thank you uh, for inspiring and informing and challenging us to live faithfully uh, moment by moment, because this surely is a moment by moment challenge for each and every one of us. And it is, as we're watching in our world, as we're watching our forest fires, as we're watching um, quite literally the world burn around us. Um, the world's on fire, and it is up to us to act. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Vicki and Deb. Um, thank you, Steve, for your sermon, Yahoo, and to our army of young ones who began our, our worship, because if we don't change, we're giving them a most horrific world. So thank you all. Blessings on you, St. Luke. Thank you. And see you again and again. All right. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.